Hello everyone and welcome to a wrap up. So a reading wrap up. Let's talk specifically, so there were a couple of readathons I wanted to participate in for the month of August. Uh, the Magical Readathon, which was created and hosted by G from Book Roast, uh, was my priority readathon. So the other one just kind of fell by the wayside. I had other stuff come up and so I didn't I didn't expect to get through all of things, but I ended up picking a different book per prompt per readathon pretty much. So there wasn't a lot of overlap. Um, so that's just kind of my own fault there. But that's okay. So I did complete the Magical Readathon for the priority portion of it. There, there are three portions of the Magical Readathon that you could do this month. So. One is to get, do your degree or whatever it's called. I chose to study Master of the Elements for the Autumn Equinox. I did complete that. The other thing is you had supplementary qualifications and opportunities that included Dragon Riding License, Apothecary Keeper, Bog Catalogger, and Sandship Engineer Certification. I did not do any of those. Uh, for the Apothecary Keeper, we'll get to that one, but I am reading the book, but I will not get to be the Apothecary Keeper. Today is August 30th. We have today and tomorrow to complete books. There's no way I'm completing more than what I'm currently reading, so that's done. So, Implinks. Uh, the prompts were to read a book. Be t um, there were six prompts for that. I'll get more into that, and in fact, let's go ahead and start, and then I'll I'll come to implings. I did not get my impling, which is fine. It's a bummer, but it's fine and it is what it is. So G mentioned in her video that because we surpassed a certain amount of books read or pages read or something like that, we were actually able to start on July 29th, which is what I did. And I'm glad I did, because otherwise I probably would not have completed my Master of the Elements this month. Now you can continue on so that you're ready for the next equinox for the next round of classes, but I wanted it done this month. So that just works better for my schedule and things like that. So I needed to get a D like Delta. So a D in elemental studies. That means that's three course classes. So we have an O, a Q like quilt, and a D like Delta. So for O, the subject is element of earth. And this is to read a book with earth in the title. I thought I had a book that had the earth in the title. I could not find it. So I don't think I do have a book that has earth in the title. However, I do have a book that has earth in the series name. I did contact on Discord to see if that would work. Someone commented and said there are actually several people that are doing it that way because that's how they can get it to fit the prompt. So for that, I read book one in the Broken Earth Trilogy by N.K. Jemisin. Book number one is the fifth season. I ended up giving this one four stars. Um, there are three names that we are following, and I don't remember all of the names, but there's three names. Basically what's happened is the main POV that we're following, unfortunately I can't remember her name, but she has this ability to sense tremors in the earth and when things are not quite right, basically when the earth is unsettled, they're in this season where there's a bunch of earthquakes and there's dust in the air. Uh, she has two children and one is missing and one is dead. You learn that within chapter one and she is on the hunt to find her missing child and you're just following her. She's on this hunt. She comes across this kid and meets other people along the way and that's kind of all I can tell you. I was really confused by it although I really enjoyed my time with it. I was still confused so I'm hoping some of my confusion will clear up when I continue on into book number two which is the obelisk gate. I know a lot of people have said it goes downhill for them, but I'm hoping I am the exception to that. <laughs> but I did enjoy it. Ultimately, um, I do like the fact that they can calm the earthquakes and things like that. So, yes, um, I'm, I can't even think of what the trigger warnings were. I did a review for this one. Um, an individual book review, and I don't remember the trigger warnings. I want to say, oh, Death of a Child is one um, that comes up a couple of times throughout this book. Um, neglect, abuse, 
type of a thing. So yes, I enjoyed it. And I ended up giving this one four stars. Okay. Moving on for the letter Q for elemental studies. This is Boulder Stance. This is to read a book that is over 500 pages. For this one, I finished a trilogy and that is the Mystic Trilogy. This is book three, obviously three books. This is a YA paranormal series. You have Aspen who can see ghosts and her dad can see ghosts. There's another person that she meets that can see ghosts and this is just the third in the series. So I can't really tell you much about this. What has happened is her grandfather has died, so her family, so that includes Aspen, her brother, her mom, and her dad, all relocated from California to this area. I think it's in Tennessee. They go to a new school. The kids go to a new school, make new friends, but Aspen can see ghosts, and it takes a while for her to open up about that, and things like that. And she gets into trouble, and her friends and her brother and family are, are there, and you learn why her dad is the way he is, and you see as the trilogy goes on, things start to open up and answers, <laughs> but it's a good time. This is independently published, so there are quite a few of grammatical errors throughout the series, but that's just what happens when you don't have a professional publisher. Yeah, so the more I, that's one thing I have found. With independently published books, there is an increase in grammatical errors with the editing process. That I am more forgiving of that because not everyone's strong in that area. I don't know about the author's name, uh, stance with that, Debbie Eiler Rasmussen. I don't know how she is on that, but I just have noticed that with independently published, there does tend to be an increase in errors. So just something to be aware of with that. And I, in my opinion, a little patience. I think it's a little less forgiving with big publishers, big name publishers. Um, where that's their job is to correct stuff like that. But anyway, so yeah, I ended up loving this one, gave this one four stars. This has, this edition has 524 pages. I had a good time with it. I love the paranormal stuff. So for me, right up my alley. Okay, number three is, uh, number three of the class is Lava Snakes. So this is for the D in Delta. So Lava Snakes, this is to read a book with a snake on the cover. For this one, I went with book number two in a series of unfortunate events. As you can see, there's a snake. So this is the reptile room. It's all about snakes and reptiles, mostly snakes, especially this big one, which is, I think he said the name is a misnomer where it says one thing, but it means completely the opposite. So like the incredibly deadly viper, but he's really kind of like a big teddy bear. So you're following the Bolair Orphans. Violet, Klaus, and Sunny, and Violet's an inventor. Klaus is a researcher. Anyway, he loves to read, and Sunny loves to bite things. And their parents die, so hence they're orphans. They go to this Count, Count Olaf type of a person who wants to get a hold of their fortune, and he still tries to get a hold of their fortune in book two. And I have read the whole series before, so I do know how things end up throughout the series, but it's still it's still good. It's a middle grade and you can definitely tell it is definitely written for younger readers, but it's still fun. Okay, so this next one was O in shape shifting. So just one course for that and that was formation, which is fangs. This is to read a book with vampires. I read The Vampire Lestat by Anne Rice. This is book number two in the Chronicles of the Vampire or the Vampire Chronicles. Hang on. The Vampire Chronicles. So this is book number two in that series. So book number one is Interview with the Vampire. We're following the perspective of Louis as he talks about his life before he was a vampire, how he was made into a vampire, learning about his vampire abilities, and then continuing on as he lives as a vampire. It's the exact same format with this one. Lestat, before he was a vampire, and all of that. Now I will say this does give uh, vibes of a love between a man and a man. Um, it also gives a little bit of incest vibes, so that's pretty much all I can say about that. And if you've read the Vampire uh, Interview with the Vampire, again, exact same format. It's just a completely different person's perspective about his life as a vampire. So the Vampire Lestat, I ended up giving this one four stars, and I look forward to continuing on with that series. Okay, next up was to get an O in Animal Studies, so one book for that, and that is Introduction into... De uh, introduction to domestic domestic creatures. This was a pet pick. 
So I put treats on a couple of books and Ophelia ate the treat off of Wicked by Jennifer L. Armentrout before she went for the other treats. This is the first in a trilogy, which is the Wicked trilogy by Jennifer L. L. Armentrout. This was actually a reread for me. I had a great time. Ended up giving this one four stars as well. Um, I had a great time. Do be aware it does get explicit with sex. But yes, my favorite character out of this is Tink, who's a little pixie or brownie is what he's called in this book. But think of like Tinkerbell, how you know the size of Tinkerbell from Peter Pan. Pretty much that size. Um, Tink was my favorite character. He was just a side character. But we're following Ivy. She's a part of this order in New Orleans where they hunt and kill Fae. Fae feed off of humans, so they are very dangerous to the human race. And the Fae are trying to infiltrate the mortal realm. So, and they're trying to put a stop to that, and so they have to kill them. And so, Ivy is a part of the organization that hunts them down and gets, sends them back to the other world or kills them. It's one of the two options. And then the guy enters Ren. I wanted to say Rowan, and I knew that wasn't right. Ren is his name. He joins this order. He's coming from a different chapter in like Colorado. And then this, it's a fantasy romance and the love blooms between Ivy and Ren. And that was very fun to watch. So yes, very steamy. Okay. Um, moving on. Uh, let's see. I had to get an O in astronomy and this was a moon song ritual. This was to read a word in the, a book that has a word in the title from the name of the last song you listened to. The last song that I listened to when I was putting together this TBR was Walked Through Hell, which was composed and written by Anson Sayabra. I love Anson Sayabra's music. So Anson Sayabra. So the book that I picked that has the word hell in it is Hell Bent by Lee Bardugo. This came out in January. And this is book number two in the Alex Stern series. It looks like there's going to be a third book, but there's no title and no cover released as of yet. But this is book number two. This definitely answers some questions from book number one. Alex has the ability to see dead people and be able to communicate with them. She is recruited to join Yale on a scholarship uh, to be like this, this particular person that oversees the different organizations or chapters at Yale, which all delve and dabble in the occult. So it does get pretty dark. This one is no exception. There's a lot of talk about entering, going through the portal to hell. So there's a lot of talk of hell and demons and portals. So do be aware of that. I had a great time. I ended up giving this one five stars. Absolutely loved this book. Um, yeah, to see the transformation and growth of the characters, I love seeing them grow and come into their own and have more confidence and strength not only in their certain abilities, but in the way they think and stuff like that. So I had a great time reading this. Five stars. Highly recommend. Um, this ended in a way where it could be a cliffhanger, which definitely does lead into there definitely could be a third book. But if Lee Bardugo were to change her mind, even though there's cliffhangers, they're not the ones that you're, in my opinion, I'm not absolutely dying to know what happens. So I can definitely wait for the third book. But Or if she changes her mind... It's not like I'm at a huge loss. I felt like enough questions were answered by the end of this book. Again, some things were left open-ended, and it will be nice to know and see how those things wrapped up, but not the end of the world if the third book doesn't come out, in my opinion. I had a great time. Okay, let's go ahead and move. And I'm sorry I'm trying to be quick with this, but yeah, I just... There's been enough time throughout the month with reading these books that I'm kind of rusty on the, how to tell you the synopsis of some of these. So I do apologize for that, but that's just how my brain operates. Okay, let's go ahead and move on. I had to get a cue in restoration. This means it's two books. So prompt O is to induce sleep. This is to start a book before bed. For this one, I did Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. This is the UK edition. This is a slip cover. So the front has the castle, the back has the owl delivering the letter, and then the book on the inside, in this case is orange, and the foiling is the owl on the cover. So I did listen to the audiobook, and this does come with a ribbon, and the color of the ribbon matches the slipcase. I did read the audio, listen to the audiobook while I read along. The audiobook, I think, is the American English edition, where obviously where this is the Philosopher's Stone, this is the UK English edition. Uh, so there were a few variations as far as that, 
Uh, one thing I forgot is how prevalent when Harry is with the Dursleys, the abuse and the neglect, the mental abuse and the neglect that he experiences. So just be aware of that. There's a lot of people that are experiencing Harry Potter for the first time. I am very happy they are interested in this world and have an interest in some kind of a world. I don't care if it's this one or Lemony Snicket or Twilight or some other series I've never heard of. So what, something by Sarah J. Mass or I don't know. Whatever they're interested in, I'm happy there's a book they're interested in. So yeah, a lot of new readers because this came out in 1997. So it's been a bit. Uh, 97, 2017. So t like 26 years ago. Yes, a lot of new readers are experiencing Harry Potter for the first time. Um, so yeah, and I hope they love it because it's a fun world to be in. It's a it's a great way to escape, in my opinion. I can just fall right in and devour it. So, uh, yeah, so this book one in the Harry Potter series, seven books, five stars. It will always be a five star for me. Love the world. Okay. Um, the last book that I had to read to complete the Master of the Elements was for the Q course in Restoration, which is Relocating Pain. This is to read a book in a different spot each time you pick it up. Now this didn't fully work for me, but I made it work the best that I could. So I did a manga and that is The Liminal Zone by Jinjun Ito, four stars. I love Jinjun Ito's work. This is a collection of short horror stories all in manga format. Had a great time. I can't tell you what this is about because it is short stories and in manga. Very easy to spoil and I don't want to do that. Um, let's see. What can I tell you? Okay, so you have one of the story is called The Weeping Woman. It's about women that are hired to respect the dead. They just cry. Okay, The Weeping Woman. You have Madonna, which is... This is someone who thinks she is the Virgin Mary reincarnated. Okay. And then you have the spirit flow of Ayoka Gahara. Um, basically, these spirits come out of a cave and people find it and they like how they feel with it. So, and it continues on from there. You have Slumber. Oh, yeah, this guy can't remember certain things. And there's a serial killer on the loose. So anyway, I had a great time with this. Four stars. I love Jinjun Ito's work. So yes, I, this definitely completed the prompt. I started this on a lunch break from work, and then I finished it that same day. Uh, I picked it up. The only other times I had to pick it up, so I started it on my lunch break at work, which is in the front room in the recliner. Yes, yeah, so I love all of Jinjun Ito's work. Um, I will always, uh, I think... And I believe I will. I have loved everything I've picked up by him, and I think that will continue to be the case. So I started this on my lunch break in the recliner in the front room. The only other time I was able to pick it up was when I was actually working during some downtime um, towards the close and end of my shift, and I finished it. The only times at that point that I had to put it down was that I, was when a phone call from work picked it up. But I tried to continue to have it in my hand unless I had to type, um, and then I had to set it down. But I picked it up in two separate places. It's just I can't always continue to pick it up in a different place every time. That's just not feasible with work for me. So I had to make it work. But I do did want to at least do a complete read in one spot or um, in at least two spots. So I made it work, and I hope that counts. But I am saying it counts. So yeah. Okay. Um, all right. So I did not do anything for the dragon writing license. I did pick some books, but did not get to those. Same thing with the Apothecary Keeper. However, I have started today... Um, Dirty Dom. This does say Dom and Becca. These are the characters. This is written by Willow Winters. This is the first one that she writ has written. And this is book number one in the Vassetti family series or something like that. It's a crime family. Um, and this is book one in that. I have read through chapter one as of right now, which is about 2.30 in the afternoon. I read through chapter two. Excuse me. Um, the language is very rough. Do be aware of that. It's my first time reading Willow Winter's book. I'm having a great time with it so far. And it's already had an open door sex scene. So if you want a spicy book, you can definitely check Willow Winter's out. She is an independently published spicy romance author. And so, yep, yeah, 
I'm having a great time. Uh, this is called the discrete series, which means the title is on the inside as well as a synopsis. So there is nothing to give away what type of a book you are reading. I just like the look of these books. So I, I like the simplistic floral on this. So we'll see how I like it. And so far I am enjoying it. I'm having a great time. Okay. And let's see, I did not do anything for Bog Cataloger and same thing with Sand Ship Engineer Certification. So I'm not gonna complete those. Now, when it came to implings, there were a total of six prompts. One book I read actually completes four of the prompts. So the prompts that this book completes is a book that is between 400 and 450 pages and has one letter that appears twice. This one has the letter I that appears twice. And this is the fine print by Lauren Asher. This has 400 and... 36 pages, so it definitely fits that. The letter I, I in fine, I in print, so the letter I appears twice, so that's for that prompt. Prompt number two is the letter appears twice, again, that's the letter I, and it was released this year or last year. This was released March of 2022, so this was released last year. Um, so released this year, last year again, March 2022, and has blue, any amount on the cover, it's blue on the cover, blue and white. So blue on the cover for prompt number four, as well as start the book at night, which I did start it at night. So <laughs> that fits four of the prompts. The next two prompts are to start a book at night and to read a book from an author that you've read from before. I did not get that. I had Twilight s slotted in for this, but I did not get to it. And then, um, the other, the final prompt is an author that you've read from before and between 400 and 450 pages. So I did not get to that, so I will not get my imp link, but that's okay. I had a great time with this one, four stars. This has Armenian rep, Down syndrome rep, and you do have talk of death of a loved one and things like that. So yeah, uh, we are following Rowan, who is the main male lead, he's a billionaire, owns the company Dreamland. Z uh, Zahara is a worker there, and she helps open Rowan's eyes to the downfalls of, not only of one ride, but of the Dreamland park as a whole. How they're not very inclusive when it comes to people with disabilities, and how they kind of treat employees like crap with the pay and the crappy insurance. And then you're following the love. It is very steamy. There's a lot of open door sex in this, so do be aware of that. Um, I had a great time. I gave this one four stars and I loved it so much. I went ahead and bought the next two in the series because it is a trilogy. So I look forward to picking those ones up. So those are the books that I have read for the magical readathon. So I did complete the, my Master of the Elements. I didn't complete the other stuff I wanted to, but at least I got my Master of the Elements completed. So I'm very happy about that. Let me know if you participated in the Autumn Equinox Magical Readathon. Talk to me in the comment section below. What was your career that you went for? Did you complete it? What was your favorite read for the month? Talk to me in the comment section below. And until next time, stay true to yourself and enjoy a good book. And I'll talk to you later.